Right, rev limiter, fairly self-explanatory. Um, fixed angle on the MS3, you've got quite a complicated rev limiter if you want to have. It can be coolant based, so you can change your um, the limit of the RPM depending on what the coolant temperature is. Or you can have it normal, so it ignores that and just follows the spark cut or the uh, fixed angle or you can have um, progressive retard so it slowly retards the ignition a lot of engines don't tend to work mine certainly I've not come across an engine that works well with retard you don't tend to feel the power lose dra drop off using retard um, spark cut it certainly does work well you can feel it as soon as you, you, you instantly feel it and, uh, and you dip the throttle uh, release the throttle and dip the clutch in so I tend to use fixed angle above 6,000 my limiters are absolute limits are probably six and a half but I don't there's pointless ever going above six so this basically means at 6,000 rpm the, re the ignition retards to one degree so you lose power and then if I hit 6,100 you can turn this on or off the spark cut hit 6,100 and um, we cut two sparks out of every nine so that'll miss one miss one fire seven miss one miss one fire seven miss one miss one so and you'll feel that straight away and then if I do manage to get up to six and a half thousand that cuts the fuel off but they ain't ever gonna get up there after after hitting this limit okay um, so that one done what we've got next taco output um, again self explanatory if you've got a taco output um, that feeds your rev counter you turn this on um, I would build mine at, with JS11 JS11 tend to build most of mine using JS11 um, if you've got an MS3X card then the output taco isn't there's all sorts of other outputs the MS3X cards so I've used the TACO output on mine but if it's one of mine without MS3X card chances are it's JS11 JS11 and uh, this is just a speed normal or half speed you'll soon know if you got that wrong fan control MS3's got quite a funky fan control on it uh, on or off you can have it so as the idle goes up increase a little bit with if the fan comes on this is your output pin so the output that it uses I'm using MS3X card so I'm using nitrous output nitrous 2 output pin um, you may depend on how I built it maybe IAC 1 2 D15 could be anything any one of these but that will be labeled uh, on the wire and loom or inside and then you've got the temperature of the fan will come on at, so that pin will go ground at 82 degrees. That pin will go to ground, switch the relay on at 82 degrees, and my fan turns off at 78 degrees. And allow the fan to be on when the engine's off. Well, that's if the engine's not running but the ignition's on, that'll stay on. And on MS3, you can shut the throttle, you can shut the fan off. So if I hit, if I put the foot foot to the floor, 90%, the fan will turn off or if I go above 70 mile an hour I've got a speed sensor, you'd have to have vehicle speed sensors connected to do that so um, hopefully above 70 mile an hour you wouldn't need the fans on but yeah. torque lock up, I've not done that before right one final thing, barometric correction mm, just make sure these are at zero so the, this column here all wants to be zero this is so as you can correct um, for barometric pressure so if the standard table the standard um, uh, calculations that within the ECU you don't feel that it's following correctly you could correct for them you can uh, increase or decrease the fueling the part of the fueling algorithm but to be honest with you that shouldn't you'd, you'd need to know what you're really doing to, to in order to have to correct that so just make sure they're all at zero and uh, this is just the percentage so if you want to add say fuel at 100 percent or 105 percent if you want to add five percent fuel just to put five in there but we're not going to do that 
and it's the same with quite a few there are quite a few correction tables dotted throughout this some of them you will use but uh, okay fueling settings injector dead time um, again leave this table as it is these are standard curves um, for voltages so uh, depending on what the voltage is uh, to the injectors depends on the cur the um, the opening time the in when you fire an injector you when you turn the injector on there's a, a period of time before the fuel starts coming out and uh, that time is generally given as sort of point eight of a millisecond to one millisecond um, and this is the table it would follow depending on the voltage so at, at 12 volts we we correct 124 percent this is a standard table used for you know most injectors if you really knew what you were doing and you had already had a, uh, the dead volt time um, table you can alter this but leave that as it is unless you really know what you're doing so there's the values in case you've messed them up there are the values what it should be and you can alter this so as um, you can have different curves you can have um, the injectors follow different curves so at MS3 you can have an individual curve for each of the eight injector driver outputs so if for instance you had um, a, a staged injection so you had a four cylinder with four injectors one injector sorry two injectors per cylinder and you staged them and you had different size injectors and you and one had a 0.8 of a millisecond opening time and one was a one millisecond opening time you could set that up here but most people have that as the same dead time 0.8 of a millisecond to one millisecond we're going to follow curve one main board this is for the main board so this is here is for your um, MS3 X board if you've got it and this is for the main if you've got just using your main injector outputs you can have different injector outputs uh, d different curves for each bank so on the main board your lower plug um, you've got two banks and on the MS3 X card if you've got it you've got eight banks so um, you can have a different setting for injector bank one and two if you want to and you can s s set them differently or you can just leave that off because 99% of people are going to have the same injectors connected to all the same to both banks same here again leave this as exactly as it is this is to all uh, these are really for if you really knew what you were doing and you um want to draw with the characteristics of an injector and you you'd need to know you'd need to have all this information from the manufacturers injector time and table we briefly discussed this earlier this is when the injectors um, if you're running sequential or semi-sequential you can alter the angle when the fuel injectors are squirted um, so this is for it's, it's, just say take cylinder one for instance there this would be 325 degrees before top dead center of um, of cylinder one at 1000 rpm and as engine speed increased I've got the angle decrease and um, so as to allow for airspeed there's quite a good explanation of how this all works on my website I would just I'd have a good read it's a bit too um, much for me to explain on how this works but this is the table that it would follow so it's a mappable table of uh, the angle when the fuel is fired in looks quite a lot of numbers there but it's not too bad when you get your head around it you can tune this so um, you can alter these angles so if you had it idling you can alter this angle and see when you get the richest mixture because then you know you've got the most efficient point and then um, you could then adjust this table, the rest of the table, um, to suit. Because the theory is that you reduce the angle by 20 degrees every 500 RPM. As you can see, roughly this does. Up to about 3,500 RPM, then it doesn't really seem to make much difference. But I've played with this on a dyno uh, at length. And um, I've done all sorts of different values. And none of it made any difference to power whatsoever. 
so um, it's all about fuel efficiency as opposed to um, power stage injection that's um, something we'll just leave that off for now Flexible. AFR control okay oh, what am I doing for time let's do that next